I mean, I want to go home. I want to see my family. I want to start a new chapter with my family as well. I've always said, like, if I need to sit in prison and do my time, I will do it. I as well am a victim of ISIS, you know? This is Hoda Mathana. She was born and raised in America, but over the last 10 years, she's become known for one thing, joining ISIS. We'll come back to ISIS in a bit, but Hoda's since become a mother, left ISIS, and is now being held in a prison camp in North East Syria. To get here, we had to fly into Iraq and cross the border into Syria. We wanted to talk to women who left their home to join ISIS. They're held in detention camps here, and we went back and forth to one of them. This is where I met Hodder, and after four days of just chatting and getting to know her, Hodder agreed to speak. Can you, for someone that's never been here, what can you kind of explain what your life is like here? Mm -hmm. it's, it's basically like the same day on repeat for four years. The only different thing is your child is growing, you know? It still, it still is um, a little scary here as well because there are still women who support ISIS and they do report everything to ISIS and we still have to be aware of... We can't really still say everything we want to say, you know? Mm. And even you doing this interview now, is that...? Yeah, like... But you still have certain people who will still want to take action against you, you know? It's still quite scary. Yeah. Hod is held here in Raj Camp and can't return to the US. And it's the same for thousands of other women and children with suspected links to ISIS living here. But Hod has taken the opportunity to break from ISIS's strict rules. Um, I think when I came here, I brought music to the camp, you know, no one was playing music before, so. Because that wasn't allowed under ISIS? It wasn't allowed under ISIS and women were still watching each other and threatening each other. But m music to me was very therapeutic, so. I like playing it, and sometimes I like blasting it, you know? Yeah, so. what kind of music? Um, I might sound really lame for this, because... Because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard... To us, actually, I hate when people say, what's your favorite song? That's the worst Yeah, thing. that's the worst yeah, sorry, question that's ever. The worst question. But I haven't heard modern music in like eight years, so I don't know what's out there, you know? Yeah. I've only heard things like from TV. Yeah. But I'm still obsessed with Chris Brown, like I said before. <laughs> Chapter one, meeting ISIS online. Hodder is one of thousands of women who packed up their staff and left to join ISIS in Syria. It's pretty well known the group were, and still are, very skilled at using social media to recruit new members. Like I first became practicing and the first people that introduced me to my religion were traffickers of ISIS, you know? And they were younger people, they were around 21, 22 years old, who, who you just had normal conversations with and it turned out to be like them persuading you that you had to come here. People that were trafficked there became traffickers and they like to attract younger women as well because w younger women who were vulnerable and didn't know the religion well themselves, they put every, um, negative thing aside about ISIS and focus on what's an obligation on you as a Muslim person. And someone who is God-fearing and afraid of missing out on all the obligations will end up listening to something like this, you know? And how intense was that time when you were talking to people trying to convince you to come over here? Um, you know, I was going through a lot of problems and I always wanted an outlet. But someone telling me that I had to come or else my religion was not accepted from me, you know? Do you think people understand, understand that? I was like physically abused, you know, and I needed, I needed some reason to leave. I felt like I didn't have a relationship with anyone from, strong enough for me to say, I don't want to leave them. Like people around my age, 
tell me it's okay, you know, you need to leave, you need to, it's, it's an obligation on you to leave the oppression that you're in now, you know, so I was convinced that way. Hodder was 20 when she left for Syria. And by that point, ISIS was known for publishing violent murder videos. And anyone could see it because it was all over social media. I think for a lot of people, they would, would have seen ISIS and, and the attacks online. And did you, were you completely aware of all of that when you were going over? What I was being told was that the jihad ISIS was doing was a jihad against Bashar's regime, which to most of the world is justified, you know? I'm just gonna stop here. Bashar is the Syrian president. He's been fighting a war within his own country since 2011. It's thought to be one of the bloodiest wars the world has ever seen. And at the beginning, Muslims were encouraged by opposition groups to travel over to Syria and help fight against the president. They didn't say that they were against the whole world, that they wanted to, you know, murder and kill everybody, that they wanted to do suicide attacks everywhere, you know. Me, I, I'll say for myself, I was against it. Like, someone had made me watch the video of burning the pilot alive. And all I said was, that's not allowed, <laughs> you know? You can't do that, someone. And they looked at me like, don't you dare ever share your opinion again, you know? because it can get you killed, you know. Hodder says when she arrived in Syria, she was taken straight to a place called a woman's guest house. Could you kind of explain what happened when you first arrived? Yeah, so they, they put us in a house and basically that, that house was locked from in and out, even the windows and stuff, and we weren't allowed to leave unless we got married. You weren't allowed to leave at we're all? We not allowed at all. How many women were in there? It was a house of like two floors and there was... The time that I was there was about 100 women. Really? Yeah. And we slept in very like unsanitary places. We've, I've never seen that kind of filthiness in my life. Like there was 100 women and twice as much kids, you know, running around, too much noise, filthy beds. Um, People going in and out of the toilet, the bathroom, like no one's cleaning it, you know. And it, it's like a system that makes you almost go crazy to force yourself to get married, because that's the only way out, you know. In her time of ISIS, Hoda had three husbands. Every time one died or was killed in battle, she'd have to marry again. And after four years, Hoda got out of her only child. She surrendered and ended up in Al Hol, the other main prison camp in the area. You arrived in Al Hol in the first camp when you um, when you left ISIS. What was that? What was that like? So when when I left ISIS territory, I was very excited and I thought it was the start of my new life. Just to just to figure out that Camp Hall was like a tinier version of ISIS, you know. And just showing my face, I lifted up my face view, you know. Just showing my face at the time almost got me killed. Like a few women came to my tent and warned me if I don't wear it again, then they'll come burn burn my tent with me and my child in it, you know? And how, how can someone like me even talk against ISIS at that time when even showing your face was not allowed, you know? After threats to her safety, she was moved to Roj camp, where she is now. When I came here to Camp Roj, I immediately took my face feel off. And I didn't take my scarf off yet because I wanted to know the environment first. And I also, was very malnourished, I didn't have much hair. So I waited till my hair grew a little bit and got thicker and I think it was about a year after I took my scarf off. And what was that like, like when, when you did that? It, it is liberating because it's the first time that I got to make the choice. You know, I was always forced, giving an image to people that I was always religious, you know, and I was forced to not wear what I wanted to wear as well. I'd, I'd have to be looked at before I left the house. Yeah, but I kind of developed this personality where if you don't like what I'm doing, I don't care anymore, you know? Yeah. And now Hodder's asking, will she ever be able to go home? 
If you search Hodamathana online, you'll probably find reports of her social media accounts and tweets that were said to be from her calling for attacks against Americans. Hodder claims her phone was taken from her and those posts were written and sent by ISIS. And it gets more complicated. Hodder's dad's from the Middle East, but Hodder was born in America. And in 2019, the US government disputed she ever actually was a citizen and said she'd never be allowed back in the country. You've had your citizenship taken off you. When you were told that that happened, what was that like? I didn't think it was possible because, you know, growing up, you always thought you were a citizen. I had um, my birth certificate, I've had yeah. passports, I've had everything else mm -hmm. an American citizen has, you know. And I've had no problems. I've had nobody come to my house and say, you're not a citizen before mm -hmm. this, you know. And I still believe I'm a citizen now. I've been through a lot of horrible, horrible things in my life. Mm. One of the worst feelings I've ever had was someone telling me I wasn't an American citizen. And that broke me completely. Mm. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit emotional. <laughs> Do you think it's fair that, that this has happened? You know, America's saying they don't want to repatriate terrorists, but the exact people they have taken back were the ones that were charged as supporting terrorism or actual being, actually being terrorists, you know? So I've always said, like, if I need to sit in prison and do my time, I will do it, you know? I'm not gonna, f I, don't, I won't fight against it. I don't know if there's anything you kind of want to say with, the victims of ISIS and the fa family members who might watch this, is there anything that you would want to be able to say to them? I mean, like, I, I feel really horrible for them that they had to face those things in their homes where they thought they were secure, you know. What we went to was not for the ideology or not for ISIS's gains or stuff, you know. It, w it was because we were trafficked there as well. And I, d I don't want them to think we agreed with the pain they were going through or the suffering that they were going through, the people that they lost, the limbs that they lost as well, you know. Um, I stand with them. I don't stand with ISIS, you know. Knowing what ISIS were doing now, yeah. How do you reflect today on that time of when you were back with ISIS? Of course, I, I regret coming here, you know, of course. Uh, if I could take it back, I would do it in a heartbeat, you know. And I've never agreed with the ideology of ISIS and I never sympathized with their attacks and with their agendas and stuff. And even here right now, I can't fully say everything I want to say. But once I do leave, I will I will be an advocate against this and I wish I can help the victims of ISIS in the West understand that someone like me was not part of it, you know? That I, I as well am a victim of ISIS, you know? I know that, I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but... In one year's time, where do you see yourself? Um, well, I hope not here because <laughs> sometimes we tell ourselves like a year from now our lives will be so different, you know. I wish with my family, you know, and I, I want to go back and teach my own family how to open up their minds and some cultural like biases and some still religious biases that they might have and I want to open up their minds as well to like what I've, um, what I've become as a person. Yeah. Bigger than a seven four seven, happy like a wedding. Higher than my credit, that's where I am heading. And I got goals I ain't even close to. I got dreams I gotta come true. I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to. I hope the trip ain't long.
Mama working three, four jobs That's why we have no lack I ain't never doubt myself though Just ain't no was special Spend my life being careful Ain't no success in that Okay